So here we have a solar car. So hello. Well, hi, I'm Winnie from the New World Solar Team, and we're here together on the ID Tech X show with the rest of my team. And we brought our solar car Nuna 6, uh, so which is actually an older model. But we'd like to tell you something about our new model, Nuna 8. So you are, you've been champion for the last eight years, is that right? Well, the eight last times? 16 years actually, and we became champion eight times. Yes. Eight times in the last 16 years. And so who are you? Uh, I'm Pim Wibbe, I'm the mechanical engineer of the team and I've been doing some research for the past year. So we started September 2015 and we finished last October with the World Championships in South Africa. And uh, who are you? I am David, I'm the electrical engineer of the team and as Pim said, we've been doing research for the last couple of years and uh, I was also driver of the car during the Salsa Solar Challenge. So how was it to drive in the, where, where did you drive, in the desert or where? We drove actually on the public road, so we, our speed is just as normal as the regular cars. So we actually drove on a six way, six lane highway on South Africa. It's really, really scared at the beginning, but then it was really fun. Scared? A little bit, a little bit, but I had a lot of trust in my teammates. So In South no Africa, aren't the kids like running on the street or something, you have to avoid them or no? In some small villages you do have to do that, but mainly we drove on the highway, so that we have no problem. Did you drive over to the Kruger Park and look at the lions <laughs> or where did you go? That would be really nice, but we did not do that. It was actually a race from Pretoria to Cape Town to see how much made the most kilometers. Pretoria to Cape Town, and you won? We won. So we you were happy, right? Kilometers. So, um, how, how, do you, how, do you, how is it possible, you're from Holland, right? How is it possible that you win so much? Uh, so, we're from the Delft uh, University of Technology and all of us got a really good technology-based background. So, we got mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, aerospace engineers and so on. Um, and you have more, more team here at the trade show, right? Who are the other guys and girls? Yes, yeah, so we're with six people here. Um, and we also have our technical manager here, he's called Bo, and he's making sure that we uh, finish our planning sometimes so we actually have the car ready to race at the point that it needs to be. Um, we also have Crystal with us, and she's our strategist, so she's been doing MATLAB all year long, so she can exactly calculate how uh, much energy we still have left to um, well, did you follow the exactly race? those calculations when you were driving? Yes. How did that happen? Did you have a list or did you radio? or? We have a radio communication with uh, Nunam, with the whole convoy. So that's really nice. It's really funny. And it's like uh, speed up, slow down yeah. all the time? Yes. Yeah? Uh, we have a target speed uh, and we have to stick to it. So that's, uh, and it varies the whole day according to the sun or the clouds or the environment and that kind of things. So let's look over here. So which, which model is this that we're looking at here? This is, as Winnie said, it's Nuna 6. That's num version 6? Number 6. We have built 8 cars during the last 50 years. This is Nuna 6. So uh, this one won? This one, unfortunately, did not won. It came second in terms of the World Solar Challenge. So that was like a wake-up call. Since then, we have built 2 more cars and drove four races, and we have all built it. So it was a really good wake-up call, and since then, we have been only winning, actually. So what's different? This is the newest one? Yeah, this is the newest so one. So what's the difference between this and this? There are two main differences. Yeah. There are two main differences. We, the race is based on the regulations. The first big difference you may notice is that th this is a three-wheeled car. Yeah. You can maybe look down and you will see that there are only three wheels, whereas this one is four-wheel drive car. All right. The second difference is that this was the first car we built with silicon-based cells. So you, so you see that yeah. they were cut, they, they were diced. And that might be a really big mistake with it. So since then we have been driving with whole cells. Whole cells? Yes. So you were in charge of doing the solar panel here? Is yes. that your, what you were doing? During my project I was in charge of the new solar array we made together with DSM. We had a new laminate. We laminate the cells together and it proved to be really nice. Laminate together and... Um is this one, uh, people are saying, uh, is it true that this is the best solar panel in the world? Yeah, the one that's on, on top of this car definitely is. Uh, definitely is the best solar yeah. panel? Yes, yes, well, we, we made an improvement of 1% on top of the solar panel that we had already, and that was already the best cells and the best laminates. Um, so we, we did that together with our partner DSM, uh, when, and we've been doing research for the past four years already, and now for the first time we managed to place it on the car and race with it. So who's DSM? DSM is a really big Dutch chemical partner we have. They're also here at the fair, and they also have a lot of, uh, how do you say that, of small departments. So they, have, they help us with everything from the carbon composites to build a car to the new technologies like the solar arrays. 
And so, uh, do you have to uh, do a specific, specific uh, design for how you put them on the car and everything for optimal efficiency? Yes, yes. From the beginning of the year, we use a lot of, a lot of calculations together with the strategist. Also, some professors of the Delft University of Technology help us during the process. If we have questions, we ask them. And then together, we try to make the most optimal uh, car. So, did you uh, pass the year? Because you're I'm students, sorry. right? <laughs> yes. No, no, actually we stopped studying for an entire year, so we, uh, most of us just finished our bachelor's degree and then just got into this project for the entire year, totally dedicated to building this car and do the op optimal research. So in the last 16 years, it's been, uh, what, 16 different teams or what? We uh, have been actually, uh, no, because, oh, that's a really good question and uh, with a long answer. But usually you stay for one and a half year or something like that? Or yes. How does it work? Yes. So it's students? Students. All their students and for each new project we have a new team. New team? So, yeah. So that's it? You, you're finished now or what? Well, you're officially, you finish, actually we finish in November, but we are still involved in the team. A lot of questions from the new guys we get, we get and also like this fair, we're here, so. Are you like sad to you're not gonna drive it again or what? You can just build another one in your next job, right? <laughs> How do you mean, next job? Well, I don't know, what, what are you gonna do in the future? What's your plans? I'm still not sure. I will firstly want to finish my master degree at, in Delft and then uh, I'll see. I think a lot of doors will be open with this project, so. Are there lots of people here that are trying to give you jobs? This uh, conference? More or less, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you were doing the mechanical? Yes, and I did some uh, aerodynamical research. So we saw at the beginning of the year the car couldn't be improved a little bit uh, on the aerodynamical side. And that was also what DSM did with us. Uh, so they 3D printed um, prototypes for us, which we could use in a wind tunnel, so we could see if they were actually better. Uh, and it turned out they were, so we improved the car with that part, uh, with 2%, so that was exciting. So the kind of work that you were doing, is it like could be in for airplanes, for cars, for everything? Uh, well, the specific project that I did on the, on the car was obviously for cars. Um, uh, I think most of the technologies used in the car, you will see back at all sorts of technologies. So for instance, the solar cells you will see back uh, on your house and maybe some aerodynamical parts you might, might see back at, at, uh, in car industries. So I think on very, very large, much, much levels on the car, you will see back at all sorts of parts in the communities. So right here you have a little table and you have a little uh, corner here, the trade show. So are you telling all these guys, come on, use our technology, uh, come on, uh, let's build real cars, what are you saying? No, well, it's actually more um, showing people what's, what's the capab capabilities of the solar, uh, solar industry. So making people aware that it's actually possible to drive 60 miles an hour with a car just with six square meters of solar array. So that's exciting to see for people uh, and hopefully opens their eyes. Is it kind of amazing to build this and then uh, know that you're driving with your own work, kind of? <laughs> and there's no like gas or anything, it's just solar? That's really, really nice. It's, uh, I just need to think about it because it's, uh, you, you get used to it because you st it's a year long work on the project, sleeping really less, making long hours, so you get used to it. But once you get uh, take a look at it back, it uh, was a really nice experience. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy it's with the experience. It's kind of amazing, no? You drive around and you're like, hey, uh, actually, we did this. <laughs> it's kind of cool, no? Yeah. I, think, was, I think the best part, uh, maybe for you as well, was the, the, the moment we started in Pretoria and we drove to Cape Town on the five lane highway that we were just talking about. And uh, David was driving the car actually, and I was in a lead vehicle. And it was, I think for me it was the most exciting moment because all, all the work came together really nicely and everything worked so smoothly. That was, yeah. that was the best part of the entire year, just seeing your car driving on the highway, on the highway with all sorts of cars passing by. That was awesome. Did you get like a stamp of approval from the South Africa or yeah. something? You need that, right? Yes, you can't just put a car in the road. And they said, no problem, just drive around as no, much no, you want. We need to, uh, we need to, you, there are a set of rules and you need to fulfill those rules. So uh, actually a, pe a person from the road authorities are going and they will check the cars. They will see if there's everything, all the nuts are tied enough and if you're able to support crashes, that kind of stuff. So this is the one you built, right? Yes. So the, where the is it now? Where is it? it? It's just arrived on the Netherlands. So that's why, unfortunately, it was not able to be here at the fair. And it's also nice for a new team to take a look at the, at the latest car so they can know so, how to do. So what else is amazing on this one? What do you have? All kinds of technologies, right? Yes. So um, what, what can you say? Like uh, I, what's, the, what's the motor? 
Well, like I told you, we had one of the biggest features was the solar array, but you asked specifically for the motor. The motor is actually located in the wheel, in one wheel, so we have an asymmetrical vehicle with... Is, one wheel? Yes. And it's also in the rim itself, so it's a direct drive. It's provided by our partner Mitsuba from Japan, and we also have a really good contact with them. So we have a custom-made motor from them. Nice. Uh, every time you have all these companies you try to work with, you have to check if they want to support your team or the other team, right? Is it hard to work with Japanese? Because it's a Japanese team, right? Well, actually, the, 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 the company I was just talking about was Mitsuba, and it's a Japanese company. Uh, and they are very interested in working with us. But we're obviously here, you're right, uh, to s just look for new technologies as well, what we might be even be capable of using on the next car. Is the rules that you can use any technology you want? How is, it, is there it, any it limitations? The yeah. It, uh, if you can give you an example, for example, the solar array is based on the on what materials you can use. During our last race, we were limited to six square meters of silicon or three meters of gallium arsenide. During the next race, we are limited to four square meters of silicon or two square meters of gallium arsenide. Less and less every less. time. Yes, because it's getting faster and faster, so we need to reduce. So it's really nice to see that with from the beginning of the project in 2001, we've able to drive the same speed with less power. So that's really nice to see if you look back at our history. So soon the car will be like tiny and it will be fast enough to... So do you think this should go on a Tesla? Well, maybe in a few years. Uh, right now, obviously, you cannot drive this on the normal road because you don't even have any mirrors on it or uh, everything. But well, you never know what, what technology brings. So right now, no. But I think in a few years, you might. And uh, maybe it doesn't recharge the whole Tesla, but just maybe it adds 5 or 10% to it. Yes, that would also very, be very interesting. So. And they should just do it. Have you spoken with uh, Elon Musk? We have not met him yet, but uh, it will be really nice if He's he... He's coming to the conference, no? Really? Is he? I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I, I, we hope so. And he, I think I, his headquarters is just next door. Yes, but I have my business card ready, so uh, <laughs> let it come. <laughs> so you, can, you should go with, your, with this car, you should just drive in front of Tesla headquarters, and you, you should honk. You have a honk? Merk, merk. That is a really good idea. Look Maybe at us, you know, and they all come out and like... Wah! And, and then, drive a, a then we drive away and then they just get with a wet mouth. Yeah, they'll give you it. each a Tesla, but you have to leave the car. <laughs> I think we can do a race with Tesla, maybe. <laughs> yeah? How's the acceleration speed? Um, well, not, not very impressive, but I, I think a, a Tesla needs to charge up for about, what is it, two hours every 500 kilometers, and we don't, so that might cancel each other out then. You only have 20 kilogram battery? And yes. We can still drive four, that, four, 400 kilometers with one 400 single 400 kilometers with, with one 20 battery kilometers with, without charging. With 20 kilos. Yes. That means you can drive at night. Yes, that's true. Or uh, when the sun starts to go down, it starts to be not so efficient, but yeah, do you that, still drive during the night or is no. it or is usually it's finished? It's possible battery. to drive during the night, but we don't do that again because of regulations. We just drive during the day. You don't have lights on it? We do have lights also. Oh, all right. But it's not, it's not safe to drive during the How the brakes? Then he can talk a little bit more about the brakes. Yeah. Uh, well, also, again, the regulations just say that you have to be able to stop within 20 meters when you're driving 60 kilometers an hour. So it can exactly do that because uh, that's the most efficient for us. And we can just uh, design the entire car around the regulations uh, so that it is the lightest car, the, uh, the fastest car. Just all the, everything must be the best. Uh, and that's why you... Oh, Are you working on the next one or the next team is working on the next one? Next team is working on the, uh, on the next one. So they already started in last September. But of course, we're still very much in contact with them. Last uh, month they started only? They started last September. One year ago? No, no, no. no. This September? This, yes. September? this September. So how soon they will have it finished? Uh, the water race is end of October. I think they will be starting uh, the 8th of October. Um, or around that date, and then they will uh, finish the car, obviously. So they have one year and something to finish? Yes. And get it to where? Where is it going to be the race? The next race will be in Australia. Australia? Yeah. So how do you get a car to Australia? You have to put it in a boat, and the boat takes like a month or something plane. to get there. We usually ah. go with the plane. Ah, okay, on the plane. Yes. So it's uh, extra luggage. You cost a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay... Uh... You can try, but I don't think you will get it to through customs. Uh, <laughs> but you put it in a, a, a big container and then we ship it to Australia. How much it costs to ship? You don't know? I don't, I don't know. really know. It's and not your pro department, We probably right? wouldn't be able to she tell you. She takes care well. of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have guys in the team that take care of the logistics. But uh, Well, we get it there and then we drive from 
uh, Darwin to Adelaide. And that's a 3,000 kilometer race. So I guess the Prime Minister of uh, Holland is pretty happy with you, right? Well, or what think, they called? I Did, think he might be. He might Prime be? Minister. He yeah. didn't say anything? Well, uh, they, sometimes they, we, we get compliments of him. Um, but you get what? what? Uh, just just a, a small word of him. But you don't get invited to the uh, to the castle or something. No, we don't get knighted. No, that that yeah. hasn't happened yet. But all right, because <laughs> this is this is the pride of Holland, right? One of the one of them. Okay, yeah. there's some other things. Yeah, like football and stuff. Yeah, no, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Okay. <laughs> all right.